So it's been a while. Lots has changed. I have a full-time job back in Indiana. I'm married. I'm making videos regularly again. Now I know some of you out there are geeking out. Ryan, we want romance. We want to know all about Hannah and the dating and all the stuff. I mean, I imagine a few people are doing that, but I have something better in mind. This is a story of something that happened directly after getting married. It's a story of regret. <laughs> oh, heavens, no, not with getting married. No, no, no. That, that was quite wonderful. And still is. No, 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 I'm talking about something else. The story does, however, start on our wedding day. See, the first thing that you really need to take note of in the story is that I decided something ridiculous to take the four most wombatical men that I know and invite them to a place of honor at my wedding. The groomsmen, of course. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the groomsmen apparently are bound by social contract to prank the groom and bride because reasons. So at one point, my brother, the best man, of course, walks up to me at the reception and says, hey man, I need your keys. What do you need my keys for, brother? Can I just have them for? Look. We both know what I need the keys for. Just give me the keys. I gave him the keys. In my defense, apparently the rest of the groomsmen were bound by social contract to publicly lynch him if he didn't get the keys? I don't know. Anyway, after the wedding, Hannah and I left the church to find my car completely covered in cling wrap. I didn't mind so much because the guys also pulled the car under the portico and out of the rain. That was nice. And we did have fun whipping out our pocket knives and tearing into the car. I'm giving the internet so much power if they caption this. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, I say all this because even though the groomsmen remembered to prank us, they forgot one crucial detail. Something everyone knows needs to happen to the married couple's car. Public notice of recent matrimonial vows, of course. A just married sign. Hannah and I realized early into the honeymoon. You know, the guys didn't write just married on the car. I know, that's weird. You think they'd have done that too. Aren't they required to do that by social contract? I'm Googling this. We decided to give them a break on this and just write it ourselves. So we took a bar of Dove soap that Hannah had packed and we went crazy. You should have seen it. It had artistic swoops and hearts and the big fancy lettering everywhere. It was amazing. Editing Ryan, can you superimpose a picture of it onto my face? Thanks. After we finished marking up the car, I started thinking about it and I realized I don't really ever see any Just Mary vehicles like ever. Like vehicles with it written on the car. Which to me doesn't make very much sense because people get married every day. Well, I was about to find out why you don't see Just Married written on people's cars more often. We took our honeymoon in Nashville, Tennessee. Hey everybody! For the first day, it looked great on our car. It was really nice. There weren't very many strangers honking at us, but there was this one time when we were parked and this guy walked up and he was like, that your car? Yeah, yeah, that's us. You married? Good job! Everything was going all right. But then... We woke up the next morning. And now it's time for Science with Ryan. Hello class, today we're going to learn about the effects of Tennessee hot weather and Dove soap on the windshield of an automobile. Allow me to read from the book of Nashville, Cars and Soap which reads, Now when soap is applied to a car that sits in the hot sun for an afternoon, an evening, and a morning, it melts the molecular integrity of the soap as well as nullifies its adhesive effect on the windshield. Now soap is what we call a meltable compound, which means that the longer you leave it in the sun, the sadder it looks. Uh, Professor, I'm a little lost. Could you give us an example? Oh, why yes. Just for comparison, this is before, this is after. It was like the perfect expectations versus reality meme, but in my rearview mirror. But strap in for a wild ride, we're not done here. That ain't the punchline, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't even gotten to the best and worst part of the story. We needed to get this stuff off the car because we were pretty sure that it was the ugliest and also saddest thing that you could possibly see on someone's car driving down the highway. Wow, look at that car over there. Someone just got married. Oh, it's so sweet. I'm sure it looks beautiful. Ah! They shouldn't have written just married on the car like that. I know, that's weird. It's like everything a just married drawing shouldn't be. I'm pretty sure this is a violation of social contract or something. I'm Googling this. So we stopped at a gas station to take care of the soap, which now resembled the mascara running down the face of the matchmaker from Mulan, what ensued was a reminder that soap is a very powerful thing. We used the complimentary squeegees that are supplied at every gas station to take care of the soap. We started wiping it off and then we realized that water and soap 
make suds. And in this case, we aren't talking about the suds that come from washing your hands. We're talking about the soap that would result from washing your hands and using up the entire bar of soap. Maybe multiple. Bubbles and foam are like everywhere, like Thanos does not have anything on us. When it comes to bubbles, the soap wasn't just in the squeegee. The soap became the squeegee. Practically inundated this gas station squeegee with soap and suds. I was trying to like get all the soap out of it by like whacking it on the curb repeatedly. And this friction just creates more and more suds everywhere. The soap streaks just won't stop. I managed to make like a Thor squeegee hammer Except instead of lightning, soap oh! comes out of it. You want me to put the hammer down? That's what the sound of soap coming out of a squeegee hammer sounds like. We had to like wash, rinse, repeat like five times before the soap and everything just like stopped sudsing up and we actually got all the marks off the windows. But finally, we got rid of it all. And in a sense, we left that gas station much cleaner than it was before we arrived. Tennessee, you're welcome. So the moral of the story, marking up your car after marriage can be really soper. But when it comes time to clean it off, it really suds to be you. Stay classy. Surprise me, I will probably regret saying that. <laughs> She thought she was safe. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see the effect of the looks. <gasps> that is hideous. I, I don't mind it being this way. <laughs>